So in this video, I'm going to go over how to mount a modern outboard on a classic Boston Whaler Montauk 17. Uh, it also applies to the 13s. There's a Boston Whaler Bolton that goes over this um, and possibly some of the 15s. But let me show you what the problem is. These classic Boston Whalers have a very shallow splash well. You can see here um, from the top holes to the bottom. It's about a hand width. Uh, and what happens is if you try to mount uh, standard BIA, uh, you'll end up somewhere underneath here, which is not really practical. Um, standard BIA is 8 inches center, so here's 8. And you can see 8 inches just kind of bottoms out right there. I'll show it to you on this side as well. Standard BIA is 8 inches off center. That's down here. Now you can see relative to the old blind hole, um, it's way the heck down here. Here's the old blind hole on this side. Again, it's going to come out down here. So let me give you a little overview of what the BIA mountain pattern is. This is standard BIA mountain pattern. And uh, you can see they got specs in terms of the... Uh, Top holes being 12 and 7 8 inches apart, which these are off center. Top to bottom, they call for 8 inches, um, which, as you've seen on this boat, is problematic. Now, Boston Whaler pulled out a dealer Bolton 1084 on April 30th of 1984, and what they say to do is mount it three quarters of an inch higher. So rather than 8 inches, um, top to bottom, center to center, it's going to be uh, 7 and a quarter. However, they do say angle it upwards, and they give you in the actual uh, dealer bulletin um, some tips on how to handle the washers, which uh, are very close to the bottom of that uh, splash well. So, there's a third option, and this is from Continuous Wave. Continuous Wave basically says to mount it an inch and a half higher than the standard eight inches. That would put it at six and a half inches. Um, and then if you mount it two holes up, you'll end up getting a little bit of a leeway in terms of what you'll be able to go. You'll be able to go up another hole, and if I'm not mistaken, maybe go down the hole, but I don't think we would want to do that. Two holes up seems to be the best uh, mounting height for these uh, classic Montauk 17s. So here they are. Um, I'll put links to these in the description in case you're uh, curious what they are and what the measurements are, but let me tell you what I'm going to do today. Basically, what I'm going to end up doing is mounting the engine to the top and then marking where the secondary set of holes are. But to do this correctly, I want to measure six and a half inches because that's the uh, continuous wave recommended <coughs> and draw a line across. That way, when I have the engine temporarily mounted, I can mark exactly where to drill the half inch holes. So to do this, if I go from the very bottom of the hole I can put a mark of six and a half but that's not center to center center to center is going to be six and a quarter right that should give me six and a half now again that's going to give me a hole right pretty close to the uh, blind holes I'll do the same on this side six and a quarter I'm going to draw a line straight across. All right, so now that I've got everything marked, I'm going to go ahead and temporarily mount the engine uh, to those top holes and uh, mark out where we're going to drill the bottom holes, and hopefully we can get a really clean engine mount uh, in a reasonably short order. All right, it's been a few days. We've had wonky weather, but the weather's great today, so I'm going to go ahead and finish mounting this engine. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to temporarily mount it so I can uh, exactly position where those lower holes are going to be. Now remember, this is not going to be to the BIA standard layout. It's going to be a little bit custom because we're doing a Boston Whaler. So let me go ahead and get that started. So I've got this on a cherry picker. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is temporarily mount it. Remember, I mentioned three, uh, third hole down. Really, it's called two holes up. And I should have it pretty close to that. I might have to lower it a bit. And the reason for that is that once that hole is lined up, the bottom hole should be almost perfect. Let me lower this just a hair. 
course there's no lowering, it's just a hitch. It's probably going to drop two inches. And they drive too far, which I knew it would. So I'm going to go up a little bit at a time to where two holes up, and I'm going to set this screw through there. I'm gonna make sure I can get the other side in. Normally I'd have somebody helping, but everybody's sick. We're all post-COVID and uh, I'll tell you one thing, the first four or five days of COVID sucks. The next three or four weeks, they kind of suck too. It's gonna start this off so it doesn't slip off. That way I'm not yo yoing back and forth between two, two sides. Normally this goes a lot easier. Actually, this one pretty easy. Um, if you're on a flat level surface, concrete, you may line these things up is not, not really that much of a challenge. However, when you're on a, basically on dirt, on a slant with bumps and hills, it can be a challenge. You can tell I've done this before. Uh, I've got everything lined up perfectly. It didn't, I kind of spared you from that because it took me about 20 minutes to get that to the point where I could do that. Now I'm not going to crank down on these, I'm just going to get it down enough that it's flush. And I'll explain why I'm doing this in just a second. So I'm trying not to really crank down on it because ultimately when I mount this, it's going to be the 35 foot pounds. It's an all transom, um, you know, it's basically steel and aluminum versus fiberglass. So. Uh, 3550 seems to be the spec. Um, I'm going to go 35, see where it looks like, and then uh, take it from there. So let me change angles and show you exactly what I'm doing at this point. All right, so I'm on the uh, starboard side. Here's that line I drew as a reference earlier, um, approximately six and a half inches below. Again, the standard would be eight inches uh, below the top hole. I've got the engine mounted two holes up. So ultimately, once we get this bottom bolt set, what's gonna end up happening is that we'll be able to raise the engine another hole up, but we won't be able to go down. And that's fine because it's been proven time and time again. Uh, you can go on continuous wave and look, uh, look this up that two holes up is the ideal height for not only the 17 mile talk, but 15s and 13s as well. So that's what we're gonna go with. Now, here's the fun part. I'm going to use the engine as a guide, may not be best practice. I'm also going to use this as a guide in terms of the angle. I don't want to go straight in relative to me. I want to go in at a 90 degree angle to the, to the actual transom. That should bring it up inside and um, give us plenty of room to work with. So let me start the hole off. And again, I'm using the uh, engine as a guide. It's a big long drill bit. That line's pretty much close to center. There's a little bit of wet wood in there. The further we go in, we're hitting dry stuff, so it's better. I don't know, we'll see. Wrench of glass on the other side. It's coming out. Feel it. All right. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do that to the other side. And then, then we'll proceed with the actual mounting of the uh, engine. Now, the reality is this is the perfect time to start your sealing process. And what I'm going to do, this is going to go from the inside out. I'm going to put a nice coating of, this is basically the equivalent of 4200. Um, it's Loctite, but it does the job. It does the job really well. 
I've already got the other side done. So I just want to show you what I'm doing here. A little glo gloopy, but once I get that in there, it's going to give us, uh, give us a nice seal as well as uh, it's going to look decent. It's not going to look like a, like a piece of junk. All right, so I've got this ready to go. I'm gonna go from the inside out. Then I'm gonna fight the engine. Let's see what I'm doing here. So at this point, we've got sealing on the inside for the top two. Next step is let's get the two bottom bolts in. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna seal the inside, <coughs> um, leave enough space on the outside. Basically what I'm going to do is um, put the seal in it and I'll give you a close-up of how I'm going to seal the outside as well. Same thing, here's the bolts that are going to go on the bottom. We'll do this side first. Get a nice layer on there. Basically I want enough to squeeze into the hole and just up against the, uh, the gel coat basically and basically just seal that off as good as it can. So here we go with that. I'm gonna get a washer started on there and a nut and um, do the other side and then we'll come back to it. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna seal everything up. All right, so I've got all four bolts in. This is where it gets interesting because what I'm going to do I'm going to jack the engine hoist up and use this as a pivot point to lift this up basically want it to separate from the uh, from the boat like so now why am I doing this because I'm going to spin this bolt around and I'm going to apply sealant all the way around it same with this one do the other side then we're going to tighten this up and it should uh, should squeeze everything into the hole nice and cleanly. So I'll start with the bottom. It's got the uh, tightest, got a little ratchet wrench going on here. The thing I like about these tubes is that I've been able to actually use one tube over a period of time and just clean the nozzle out. It seems to work pretty well. I am going to be a little bit more generous here. And what this does, it really allows us to minimize the amount of slop that we have um i've seen a lot of installations where there's just massive amounts of sealant now I, I really don't believe it's necessary i'm just making a mess here as well but I'm trying not to make sure there's plenty on the other side All right, I'll clean the excess up with facet, Tom. Huh? All right, let me go ahead and get the other side done. Now for the fun part, I'm going to go around and tighten these all a little bit at a time. Try to get everything up there evenly. And then finally, I'll torque it to 35 foot-pounds. Get this close. The other side, tighten it at some. Five foot pounds. Let's go for it. All right. 
Now it's just a matter of getting the other side down to 35 foot pounds. I'll clean up a little bit of the excess, which there really shouldn't be that much because of the way I've done it. And uh, we'll call this done. All right, so the engine's mounted. We've got it sealed up. It's torqued down to 35 foot pounds. Uh, let me show you what those look like. And again, this is why I like using this technique because there's very little um, oozing and squeezing out and stuff like that. And I did clean it up a little bit. But uh, if you can see, uh, it, it's a fairly clean install. Torque down to 35 uh, foot pounds. Um, these nuts are the nylocks, so I don't expect them to go anywhere. Um, they're all stainless steel, but I'm pretty happy. All right, so we're calling this done. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and you've gotten something out of it. If you have, hit share and like. And please don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.